As for the right hand part, you will use all four fingers of the right hand, your thumb, index, middle, and ring finger. And what you will do is a typical, almost classical guitar style pattern of thumb, index, and then we're going to double up on our middle and ring fingers. In classical guitar terms, you have P, I, M, and A. So I'll do it with just open strings just to get you started. Let me give you another angle so it's easier to see. When it switches to the bar chords B and A, you will shift your fingers from strings 5, 4, 3, and 2, and you will go to 6, 5, 4, and 3, but you'll repeat the same pattern. One thing with finger style playing is you increase your speed, your hand has to stay as still as possible. As we go to the other section of the song, the pattern gets a bit easier, where it breaks down into a single strike and then a double. So you'll be using your P finger, your thumb, your index, and your middle. This time the string sets are 5, 3, and 2. Then of course you will go to 6, 4, and three. I think of this as single double. The first chord in the progression is C sharp minor in the barred example. You will go to fret 4 and you will play what I usually call the B minor form, but up two frets. So you will be on the fourth fret, fourth position, with this form. And you will play the pattern I showed you earlier. The next chord will be E major. Now this is a barred form also. Your first finger will cover fret 7, but you really don't have to hold down anything more than the fifth string. Don't try to squeeze down on all the strings because this finger, your third, is going to come and it's going to hold down strings 4, 3, and 2 on fret 9. So you have E major. And all you're going to do is play the same pattern. The problem I find here is going from C sharp minor to E major, you could get a little string noise. I will show you. As you see, when I lift it off of C sharp minor and moved, I get kind of a squeak or a scraping sound. It's almost impossible to not have any noise there. So what you do is try to cut it down as much as possible. Our next move will be to our six string major form bar chord on fret seven, which is B. The next chord after will be A. The right hand pattern now moves the string six, but it's the same movement as you've already learned. Now, let's go through all four chords. E, this is B, A. Let me give you
give you a little tip. When you are moving from bar chord to bar chord and you are doing finger style guitar, you typically are going to strike one of the notes first. And that's the note you want to put down first. I would say when you're moving from this B chord to A, you know you're going to strike string six first. So that finger is going to land first and then your others will follow it. Don't try to get everything down at once because you won't get a really good sound as possible. You're going to miss that six string and get a buzz note. Watch when I move from fret seven to five. I move down. It's pretty clear that I landed and then these fingers followed. That's very important to remember. That is your progression. And that does get you through a good part of the song. So let me play through it. The next section is easier. Let's move on to the capo version as it's going to be somewhat easier. Now I'm going to place the capo on fret 4. Now that changes the pitch of the instrument. When we play A minor now, it's going to be C sharp minor that sounds. When we want to play E, it's going to be a C chord that sounds. When we play C, the root with my third finger on the seventh fret is actually E. It's sounding E, but it looks like C. Then I'm going to play a G chord, which is really sounding a B. And then I would play an F that's going to sound an A. If I am playing with a student or another player, I'm not going to call out the chords that are sounding. I'm going to say A minor, C, G, F. F really being the only tough chord of those. Our right hand fingering changes. Our thumb now strikes five. Our index will strike three. Our middle and ring will strike the top two. For our A minor chord, we strike five, three, and then we strike two and one with our middle and ring finger. So now, which in reality is probably more comfortable if you've played a lot of finger style guitar. That gap between the strings does make a difference. When we go to C, we have the same fingering. For the G chord, we're gonna start on six. Then we're gonna go six, four, three, and two. And then for F, the same. Let me point out one thing about the G chord. Hold only one note down on the G chord. That is six string and three frets up from the capo. We don't need any other notes held down. It doesn't make sense to go into a big G chord or even this form if you're not gonna play the fifth string. There's no sense having the finger there. For F, you could come around with your thumb and then play the top part of that chord, or in the bar position. For our purposes, I'll go into the bar position. So now your progression is A minor, C, G, F. Let me show you the right hand pattern for that. Here is your right hand pattern. section which I call the one against two, meaning thumb, single note, and then doubling with your index and middle, 
will occur on strings 5, 3, and 2 for A minor and C. And then for G and F, you're going to go 6, 3, and 2. I kind of like this part. It's a little bit easier to play, but you still have to have a pretty strong sense of rhythm to make it, to pull it off. You can elaborate on this chord pattern. If you're playing along with a singer or even in a band situation, and you find this chord pattern a little bit stifling and a little bit too repetitive, then you can elaborate a little bit. Remember that the fun of music sometimes is in the process of learning it. You should walk away from every practice session feeling like you've learned something new. Don't just sit and play things you already know. Try to push yourself a bit.